I marvel at these readings that we read each and every year. And when it comes up again, it's, uh, there's so much more that the Lord has to give. And I think the reason why is that the Lord has helped us to grow in Him and appreciate much more what He has to offer in these readings. They are never just the same old, same old. There's something wonderful, something new, something more full of His life in them. And so we come to the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time with the first reading from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 42 to 44. A man came from Baashalisa, bringing to Elisha, the man of God, 20 barley loaves, made from the fr first fruits and fresh grain in the year. When Elisha offered the offering to be given to the people, his servant objected that it would not be enough for a hundred people. Elisha responded that he is to give it to the people anyhow, because the Lord says they shall eat and there shall be some left over. And there was. God provides and will always provide in abundance. In our third reading, chapter of John, chapter 6, verses 1 to 15, because he was performing many miracles to cure the sick, a large crowd followed Jesus. Philip says that a large sum of, of money would not be enough for each of them to have a little. Andrew said to Jesus, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what good are these for so many? Jesus had the crowd of about 5,000 men and those that accompanied, accompanying them recline. After they ate their fill, 12 wicker baskets with the fragments from the five barley loaves were collected. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. So as Jesus realized that they were going to try to make him king, he fled to the mountain alone to escape them. He had come to be the Messiah of a spiritual kingdom and not of an earthly one. The miracle of the multiplying of the earthly food was to proclaim that he would feed all people of all times with a spiritual food that gives life for all of eternity. In our second reading, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. While in prison, Paul calls upon the Christians of the church of Ephesus to bear with one another through love, so to be one body, that breathes its life through one spirit, in one Lord, one faith, one baptism, having one God and Father of all. He is over all and lives through all and in all. When we live in Christ, we live in Christ together. We are still each unique, united, though different, diverse, though yet not, yet not divided. Our life is God's love for us. His love is the life that binds us to one another. 